Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss continuous compounding. In this video, we will define the topic of continuous compounding, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of continuous compounding falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. It has been established in previous videos that money does not have the same value at different points in time. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. Up to this point in our studies, we have dealt primarily with nominal interest rates expressed in an annual basis. Having this nominal rate, as well as a defined period, we could quickly jump to referencing the appropriate economic formulas found in the table on page 114 and the compound interest tables starting on page 116 of the NCEES reference manual to carry out the necessary analysis. However, when we encounter a problem where it states that the interest is being compounded at a rate greater than once a year, we must take a detour in our analysis and first convert that nominal rate into its effective interest rate. In other words, continuous compounding simply means that the compounding period for the noted interest rate reaches infinity and must first be adjusted into an effective interest rate prior to moving forward with any analysis. So let's walk through the general workflow. The goal of continuous compounding problem is the same as any of the previous problems we have encountered up to this point. To convert a certain monetary transaction or transactions into some equivalent transaction or transactions at some other point in time. Because we are dealing with an interest rate that is compounded continuously over the year, we must convert that rate first into what is called an annual effective interest rate before continuing along in our normal workflow. The NCEES reference manual does not have the general equation for converting a nominal rate compounding continuously directly into an annual effective rate. However, this annual effective rate can be determined by using the non-annual compounding formula found on page 114 of the NCEES supplied reference handbook. 8th edition, 2nd revision. The non-annual compounding formula is I is equal to 1 plus R over M raised to the M minus 1, where R is the nominal annual interest rate and M is the number of compounding periods per year. The appropriate period for an interest rate compounded continuously is infinity. To simplify things, I typically use a period of 365 when using the non-annual compounding formula for continuous compounding problems. If we were to use a period of infinity, this equation would simplify to I is equal to E to the R minus 1. Once the annual effective interest rate is determined, the goal remains the same as before, to convert transactions into equivalent transaction at some other point in time. The next step is to determine the various factors of importance. These factors include number one, the annual effective interest rate, which we've already established, number two, the period, Number three, the identity of the current transactions, whether they're future, present, or annual, and the equivalent value to be determined, whether it's a future, present, or annual value. Once these variables are defined, we can solve these problems in one of two ways, either by using 
the formulas found in the table on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, or by using the functional notation version of these formulas and referencing the compound interest tables starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. In an effort to establish efficiency, it is best not to use the compound interest tables to determine the final answer. This is because, as you will see, oftentimes the annual effective interest rate won't be a whole number, requiring an interpolation if the compound interest tables are used. So let's run through an example. A local bank is offering a savings account that pays out 8% nominal interest, compounded continuously, on accounts opened in the month of August. If an engineering firm jumps at the opportunity to open up an account and plans to invest $7,500 a year into it, how much money will the firm have after seven years? So here's the solution. The goal is to determine how much money will be in the savings account in the future after depositing $7,500 annually over a seven year period. The problem states that this is a continuous compounding problem. With that, we need to automatically remember that any interest rate that is compounding more than once in a year is converted from a compound nominal rate into an annual effective rate. Our first step will then be to convert this nominal rate into an annual effective rate. This can be determined by using the non-annual compounding formula found on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. The non-annual compounding formula is I is equal to 1 plus R over M raised to the M minus 1 where R is our nominal annual interest rate, which in this case is 8% or 0 0.08, and M is the number of compounding periods per year, which is equal to 365. Plugging these values into the equation, we get I is equal to 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 365 raised to 365 minus 1 which is equal to 0 0.0833. After establishing the annual effective rate, the total savings can be determined in one of two ways. Either by using the uniform series compound amount formula found in the table on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, or by using the functional notation version of the equation and referencing the compound interest tables. Oftentimes, the annual effective interest rate won't be a whole number, so it's best to avoid the compound interest table so we don't need to interpolate between values. This problem deals with an annual cost over a period of time. To convert these costs into a future sum, we can use the uniform series compound amount formula found in the table on page 114. This formula says, F is equal to A times 1 plus I raised to the N minus 1 divided by I, where F is a future sum of money taken into account some uniform annual sum denoted with an A at a certain interest rate I over some number of periods N. Like I said, A is a uniform annual sum of money I is the effective interest rate for a specific interest period. It is important to note that the problem will give the interest rate as a percentage, but when we are working it into these formulas, it must be represented as a decimal value. So we've already have it in its decimal value, so we got to keep it there when using this formula. And N is the number of interest periods. In this problem, we are given F which is our, the unknown value we are solving for. We're given our annual value, A, of $7,500, and we're, we've already determined our interest rate is 0 .0833, and our period is seven, or seven years. 
Plugging these values into the uniform series compound amount formula, we get F is equal to $7,500 times 1 plus 0 0.0833 raised to the 7 minus 1 divided by 0 0.0833. That equals $67,601. So the savings account will have $67,601 in it after a period of seven years. So that's, that's pretty much it. Now here are the problems that we can run into. One problem is to fail to realize that the nominal rate is compounded continuously and not convert it first into an effective interest rate. We may also fail to reference the correct formula for the specific scenario we are dealing with or simply fail to apply the effective interest rate over the entire period we are analyzing. These are all simple yet catastrophic mistakes often brought on by the external pressures of time and the other pressures we will encounter on exam day. They are all easily mitigated by realizing that they are all common and looking out for them up front. Well that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video.